Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have about two more minutes and then we'll get started. So if you don't mind just hanging out with us, you will be on listen only mode. So if you need to chat with us, make sure you're doing so in the question and answers column. Um, but give us two more minutes and we'll be ready to get started. Alrighty, it is three o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Brittany Greer, and I am the Math and Science Liaison for Career Services, um, and I will be your host today. Um, we have a lot of great faculty and advisors here to um, let you know all the awesome things that are going on in math and science. Um, but to get started, I wanna go over a few housekeeping things. So, like I said earlier, we're gonna be in listen-only mode. So if you have something to say or you have a question, please feel free to use the question and answers tab. And um, that's a great way to um, interact with the faculty. If you have a comment, please feel free to put that in the comment section. And then we are also, just so you know, streaming live on Facebook. So this will be recorded if you need to access it at a later time. Please feel free to check out our um, Facebook pages, whether it be a student um, life or career services, and you can find us there, okay? So without any further ado, let's get started. Um, first on our first on our agenda today is the awesome math department. So with us, we're going to have Lynn Kent, Diane Trimble, and Jackie Swiskin. Hi, we're so happy that y'all are joining us today. I am Lynn Kent, Dean of Mathematics, and we also have um, faculty and faculty department chairs here, Diane Trimble and Jackie Swiskud. Um, if you enjoy patterns, problem solving, logic, then perhaps math is a degree that you should consider. Uh, employers are um, happy to find, high, find and hire people who have skills, strong skills in problem solving, analytical thinking, critical thinking, and math as a degree that provides those and demonstrates to employers that you have those kinds of skills. Some um, fields that you might go into from math, of course, with a math degree, you may become uh, a teacher, go into education, but there's there are a variety of fields besides that that you can go into with a math degree. Some of those might be business related, finance, economics, uh, data analytics, operations research always pops up uh, as a, a strong career field for math majors, statistics, logistics, insurance actuary, information technology, all of those and others are degrees that math majors uh, tend to go into. With an associate's degree in math, which is TCC's two-year degree, there are job opportunities. Your opportunities expand if you transfer and get a higher degree along with your two-year TCC math degree. With the two-year degree, you might um, go into some sort of clerk position in finance or banking, uh, payroll, bookkeeping. Uh, you might also find career fields in office management or insurance with the two-year degree. If you transfer and get a higher degree, you open up opportunities in other fields. Um, some of those could be physics, engineering, um, accounting, economics, uh, insurance. So you, you do have um, 
and, and really any of the STEM degrees, chemistry, um, physics. So you do end up with more opportunities if you go on to a four-year degree. Diane? Hi, I'm Diane Trimble. I teach math and I'm also one of the faculty chairs in mathematics. And you probably are wondering, well, what kind of courses would I take if I major in math? Well, I have the math and let me see if I can share my screen with you. Oh, I cannot. So let me just talk about it, that you're gonna take four major math classes. So you take Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and differential equations. We also ask that you take a statistics class because we think that's important for you to know a little bit about statistics and your employer probably would appreciate that too. And it will help you in your other classes at the university level if you decide to do that. Um, and there's a lot of leeway. So as Dean Kent said, you could go into chemistry, you could go into physics, there are other, uh, you can go into engineering, you can do a double major. So with the gen ed requirements along with math, you have a choice on what your science classes are. So if you lean toward physics, you could take the physics to do your science requirements. So a lot of students have a math major and then they also have an engineering major or maybe a physics major. So keep that in mind. Um, we do work with other universities. So you should also make sure that what you take here at TCC would transfer and help you at your university level also. And also we wanted to let you know that we do have different math pathways. Of course, if you're interested in math, you're gonna be on the STEM pathway, but we also have for liberal arts, the quantitative reasoning pathway. And then for business, we've just started the modeling pathway. And then we also are starting a statistics pathway. So if you're interested in other fields, once you get in here and decide, oh, maybe this isn't for me, there are other math pathways. Okay, so next, Jackie Swicegood is up. Hello and welcome. So I am Jackie Swicegood and I'm also a math faculty and a math chair. Um, I want to share some ways in which you can be successful in math. If you are already a math lover, then you figured some of these out on your own. If you're not, then maybe I can give you a few new ones. So there's always the standard, um, no matter what class you're taking, that helps with your success. You know, attending class regularly, uh, taking notes, being an active participant when you're in class, asking questions when the time is appropriate, which we all learn depending on the way the class is set up by the professor. Um, then after class, getting started on whatever assignment's given to you as soon as you can. Because the longer we wait, the more of it we forget. Um, there's also the rewriting the notes that you take in class, adding in things that you uh, didn't have time to put in, uh, reviewing your notes. These are all standard. It doesn't matter what course you're taking. But there are some that I think are lean more towards the math classes and even some other math related courses. I think most of us have heard that math is a universal language. Um, and if that's true, it's a true statement. I don't think anyone has ever argued that. And with every language, there's vocabulary and terminology. So if you want to understand mathematics, you need to know the vocabulary. And we typically think vocabulary is part of our liberal arts type courses, uh, where history and English, we have to learn our vocabulary. Well, in mathematics, we often use the same English words, uh, but in a slightly different way. So, and that shouldn't be surprising to any of us that know English, right? Lots of definitions for a single word. It's important that we know how the terminology is used in mathematics because those are the very terms that show up in instructions. 
And when you're on a test, the only hints you're given are the instructions. So unless you understand what the instructions are telling you, which is generally a lot of information, um, you're kind of lost. So my suggestion, and my colleagues agree, is that you understand all of the terminology that are in the instructions as you're going through the homework. Um, here are some of the things that we, as students, because we are all students, no matter what age we are, learn in order to get past some of those hurdles. If we're not going to actively learn the terminology, we then learn Okay, with this set of instructions, this example tells me what I need to do. The problem is when you get to a test, you don't have those examples. And so the learning the vocabulary is your means of not having to have an example. Um, reviewing the material before class. That is good for any subject, right? Uh, reading the book. And I know the plot is not exciting <laughs> Uh, when to read a math textbook, but it introduces you to the vocabulary and it introduces you to the problems when you look at the examples. If you do that prior to going to class, then that allows you to be able to get more out of your class by being able to ask an instructor when they use some of that terminology. What does that mean? Um, you get more out of the problems that the instructor is going to go through because you've already introduced yourself to those problems. And the last thing I want to point out is that you don't necessarily study math as much as you practice math. It's like learning how to um, play an instrument. You can study things, but until you practice that instrument yourself, you're not gonna be good at it. So watching your professor do problems, that's great. But you're gonna find that when you do them yourself, you may have more questions. I hope this is helpful for you, not just in um, the, your math classes, but in classes in general. And maybe explains a little bit why your teachers in the past have given you these same suggestions. And I would also like to add that for all of your science and math classes, every campus has a science and math tutoring center. And that is a great place to go, free tutoring. It happens to be um, not uh, going physically during this semester, but uh, virtually. And you can meet one-on-one -on -one with a tutor uh, virtually in the science and math tutoring center. The links are on the website. And get awesome. help as soon as you need it. Don't wait. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for um, joining us today, Lynn and Diane and Jackie. That was all very insightful. Um, moving on to our next faculty, we're going to have Ms. Janine Jensen, okay? Math vocabulary. That's probably why I didn't go into math. <laughs> Welcome to y'all. Um, this degree, we, TCC offers health and human performance degrees and nutritional sciences. And if you're one that loves to exercise and eat healthy, this degree is for you. Um, if you start this degree and you are one of fitness enthusiasts, you will notice that everything you learn, you apply in your actual workouts and your everyday lifestyle. It's also a degree that you not only teach yourself, but you will be teaching your family, your friends, your spouses, and so forth, everything that you learn in class, because everything that you learn, you're able to apply to your everyday lifestyle. TCC offers a health and human performance degree that transfers over to OSU and NSU, and those can be obtained here in Tulsa through OSU Tulsa or NSU in Broken Arrow. Our HHP degree can, uh, our first two years, I always recommend to get your associate's degree through TCC first and then transfer on. Therefore, they will be able to take all hours accepted instead of just going to your transfer university without the TCC associates. And then they'll be more, uh, they'll be able to choose what classes they will take and so forth. 
There's all kinds of career opportunities in the health and human performance degree. According to the Occupational Outlook uh, recently, they claim that by 2024, the occupations are going up to 15% higher than the national average. And this could be as a, a physical fitness trainer, a personal trainer. Um, you can work in hospitals, you can work in, uh, in corporations. More and more corporations are going into wellness programs, which is giving insurance companies incentives to offer uh, some, some monetary incentives if you pass certain uh, health, uh, health uh, tests and so forth. You can also work in the food bank or in uh, fitness centers or in the recreational or going into coaching or scouting uh, if you're into any type of athletics. It's a fun degree. I love it. I love what I do. And um, we've got some great faculty here at TCC um, helping to promote our degree. The other one we have is our nutritional sciences degree. And again, you get your associate's degree through TCC, and then you unfortunately have to go to OSU um, Stillwater, or you can go uh, NSU. They have a nutritional sciences degree that you have to get your last two years in either Tahlequah or in Muskogee on their, Tahlequah, in their NSU um, uh, campus. The um, career, if you're interested in the degree, I always recommend to go through career services and sign up for a virtual uh, appointment. And they also recommended a great website is called What Can I Do With This Major, which will give you all the different options and career choices that you can do with a health and human performance and physical education degree. Let me see. Awesome. Thank you so much, Janine. And she really um, plugged a lot of our services. One thing, if you're looking into um, different degrees or different occupations and you want to learn more about it, we use the Occupational Outlook Handbook, which is like super long, I know, and hard to um, remember that big, long name, but it's so helpful and it gives you a really good insight onto or into um, the field, kind of how what it takes to get there and all the different cool things like that. So thank you so much for mentioning that. And thank you okay. so One thing I for... did want to mention too, with the nutritional sciences degree, our two-year program, it transfers on to a four-year degree in the dietetics of OSU or NSU. And I think this is the last year they're requiring a four-year degree, but in dietetics, it'll eventually be going to a master's degree. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, coming up next, we have our chemistry faculty, and that will be Ryan Johnson. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, so uh, once again, my name is uh, Dr. Johnson, or my students call me Dr. RJ. And first thing I want to say is we want you. We really do. Um, at TCC, um, we can say that we're a community for you. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to give you a quick tidbit about myself. Who am I exactly? Um, born and raised in Oklahoma City, so I am an Oklahoman. Proud Thunder fan, as well as went to a couple of different high schools, but I ultimately graduated from Hardin Charter Preparatory High School in the city. I got my undergrad at Langston, and I got my PhD in chemistry from LSU as well as I've been at Swasu and now I'm at TCC and I have a lovely daughter and wife. So that's a quick thing about myself because once again, we're a community for you. So I feel like it's good that you know who your professors are. You're not gonna get that at other universities. Uh, so a little bit about TCC, uh, here's some general information. Uh, you know, we're top 4% as well as we have a very smaller class size than you think. Um, as well, our costs are better than others. And all you need is a high school diploma, ACT score, and you can apply online right now. Now, specifically, I'm gonna talk about chemistry because I'm assistant professor of chemistry at TCC. So exactly with this chemistry associate's degree, 
chemistry is a very important because basically everything evolves chemistry. It doesn't matter what you say, it evolves chemistry because chemistry is about matter, which everything is composed of matter. So chemistry is very important as well as we have a number of student organizations that while you're here with your chemistry degree, not only are you here for education, but you're here for experience as well. So our student organizations we have, we have a club of medical and natural sciences, our Southeast campus, engineering and science association at Northeast, MAD or making a difference, the scientist club, as well as our science club. Now, once you get here, your chemistry degree can take you a variety of different ways. So please never let chemistry scare you uh, because you can go to nursing, pre-med, you can do some lab work. There's a variety of programs you can enter just by getting involved with chemistry. Uh, so as far as our associate's degree requirements, you, will, you have a total of 60 to 64 hours you must complete. And out of those 60 to 64 hours, they're basically split in half. So of course, you're gonna have your general education uh, credits that you have to complete, such as US history and English, but you also have to complete your core classes. So like chemistry, uh, organic chemistry, physics, and some other higher degree mathematic courses. But the key thing to understand about this associate's degree is that this is a transfer degree. So you're able to transfer to any other for your university. Uh, you always wanna make sure just before, but if you were trying to go to OU, OSU, uh, Southwestern, any of those, your degree will be able to be transferred to those for your uh, institutions. Uh, so chemistry, once again, very important. You could go a variety of ways. Once again, we're a community for you. And quick thing before I end here, are you guys scared? Well, I hope you're not because once again, at chemistry, there's a lot of things you can do with chemistry and people typically get afraid of chemistry. And one thing I have in the chemistry department is my program called Don't Be Scared. And it's an initiative to make sure that we get more representation in the STEM environment. So I'm gonna play you guys a quick uh, video just to show you about what Don't Be Scared is about. Oh, I guess it's not gonna let me show it to you guys. Here we go. Ryan, can you put the closed captioning on for us, please? Yes. Thank you. So once again, everybody, this is Don't Be Scared, my research program at TCC. We're more than just chemistry. We like to get involved in the community. So if you ever want to get involved, make sure that you reach out. Um, chemistry would love to have you. We really would. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Um, before we move on to our next one, does anybody know any jokes about sodium? Nah, okay, check your local periodic table to get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I see everybody's leaving after my joke, so sorry. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our life sciences faculty, um, Dr. Julie Porterfield. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Porterfield and I am the Dean of Science in the School of Science and Math. And I wanted to share some information with you today about our life science programming. Um, life science is a pretty broad subdiscipline of science. And as you might expect with such a broad field, we have careers that are very wide ranging. So we have careers that can be general biology, or we can go super specific into um, research scientists, um, as Ryan was talking about chemists, uh, a lot of our biology um, 
programs kind of cover a lot of information and, and physics and chemistry and math. It's all um, combined in a life science program. So biology careers really can lead you to study a lot of things such as organisms. They can help build developmental knowledge uh, about life in general and understand how life processes for a different number of um, organisms work. Uh, we have a, a, a large group of faculty. I think we have about 45 faculty uh, at, that are full-time faculty that are um, starting and willing to help all of the new students come in and really learn what biology and life science is about, whether it's um, treatments of disease or sustaining our natural environment. Many life science graduates choose to study um, post the associate's degree onto the bachelor's level, and some science uh, students will go postgraduate and specialize in a specific field um, related to life sciences, but that's not necessarily needed to further expertise or, or expertise or career development. So what careers could you pursue with a biology degree? You can be a biologist, an ecologist, a natural conservation officer. You can go into more cell, uh, cell and molecular technology as a biotechnologist or a research scientist. You could also work with um, criminal justice arms of our government and be a forensic scientist. And you can work in different government agency roles that are setting the policies for um, our uh, country. And um, a little bit off topic of life science careers, you could actually get a life science career and become a scientific writer. And you can write for publications, newspapers, magazines, um, journals, or like many of us on this call today, you can get a life science or science degree and become a teacher. Our life science department has 11 main programs that are transferable to many of our partner institutions as um, Janine and Ryan have discussed. These programs are developed to help you build transferable skills, not only to a partner university, but also to the workforce. And those transferable skills could be critical thinking, logical thinking, um, teamwork, personal and social responsibility, and oral, written, verbal, nonverbal communications. All of those uh, transferable skills are highly sought after in the workplace right now. So whether you're moving into the workplace or you're going into um, a higher level of your education, based on your interest, we have a life science program for you. And embedded within these life science programs, we have co-curricular activities that you might be interested in. So one of the big co-curricular activities in life science is undergrad student research. And across many of our life science courses, our um, undergrad students will work with faculty to develop a research project and they will take a semester to learn more about their research project and go through the steps of research. And at the end of the semester, you'll have a poster presentation or a publication that you can um, publish as an undergrad researcher. And that is not um, typical for community college students. So Tulsa Community College really is bringing you a lot of high impact practices that will help you when you move further in your either your higher education or in your career. If you're not interested in undergrad student research, we also have co-curricular co activities such as service learning activities, where this is a way for you within your life science courses to give back to the community. These are usually volunteer activities, which typically have something to do around life science. And your um, co-curricular courses are tagged and you can work with your advisors to find those co-curricular service learning courses so that you can give back to your community while you're getting your education at TCC. As Ryan mentioned, we also have a lot of different science clubs. We have the Club of Medical and Natural Sciences and we have the PiSci Club. And I might have said that backwards, it might be Sci Pi Club. <laughs> I think probably the West Campus faculty could correct me on that. But um, these two science clubs are really um, for your development and getting you to understand the steps that it needs to um, become a life scientist or a medical professional or the skills that you need to better your application when you transfer over to a university or a medical program. 
We also in the life science programs have honors courses and we have a pretty big honors program at TCC. So if you're taking AP classes or if you're interested in taking honors courses at TCC, that would be something that you could start off with in your first semester is um, looking for those honors courses. And honors courses in life science have, um, they're no more difficult than a regular course that we offer in life science. They just have specialized projects that are um, in tune with the material that you're learning. So you're applying your knowledge in a different way in an honors course versus a non-honors course. And then we also have um, supplemental instruction and tutoring services as mentioned by Dean Kent earlier. These are free opportunities for students to meet with other students to talk about their coursework and um, get a little bit more detailed one-on-one -on -one help with um, problems that you might not understand with the work that you're doing in your courses. And I um, wanted to mention, Dr. J said earlier, are you scared? And I thought that was really great to mention because um, I'm sure that all of this information that you're getting today is pretty scary. And I will say, I know from personal experience, because I was sitting in your seat not too long ago, I was a first generation student. No one else in my family had ever gone to college. And so that was a new experience for me. And if it wasn't for my faculty members in my science program at the universities that I went to, so I started at a community college, just like you are, and then I transferred over to a partner institution. And if it weren't for my faculty um, helping me along that process, that, that process would have been a lot more scary. And so I say completely wholeheartedly reach out to us when you have questions, if you need more information about programs or which courses to take, then go to a life science faculty member because we are really here to help. So we have two big branches of our life science department. We have more of a environmental biological branch and we have a pre-professional health branch. Either one of those branches will get you the information that you need to further your career in a life science field. Thank you so much, Julie. Yes, so much information. We have a slide that we can show at the end that highlights some of those majors if you're still curious about what those majors might entail, um, or just a list of the majors. Um, but moving on next, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our physics faculty. Um, before we get started, we're going to watch a quick video right quick. So we'll watch a quick video and then we have um, Dr. Paul Clancy and um, Dr. Richard Walcott that's gonna talk to us a little more about physics. I am one of the faculty in the physical science department at Tulsa Community College. The physical science department at TCC has three programs. We offer associate degree in physics, associate degree in geology, and both of those are university transfer. We also offer a certificate in geographic information systems, which is a workforce certification. In this video, I will talk briefly about each one of these programs, their career opportunities, and the degree map to complete them at TCC. I will first talk about the associate degree in physics. Physics is the study of everything in the universe from elementary particles all the way to stars and galaxies. Career opportunities in physics include research, education, industry, scientific agencies, and even financial institutions. At Tulsa Community College website, you will find a degree map for the associate degree in physics, which lists the courses that you need to take each semester. These courses include required courses and suggestions for electives. Please note the milestone section under each semester for important remarks. Also, please note the transfer information at the end of the page. Regarding to geology, geology is the study of the makeup of the earth. Career opportunities in geology include research, education, environmental agencies, 
and industry. The degree map at Tulsa Community College website for geology. Again, pay attention to the milestone section at the end of each semester list and the transfer information. A geographic information system degree provides you the skills on how to create maps that reveal spatial relationships important for planning and communication. It has wide range of career opportunities in industry, environment, agriculture, and military. The GIS certificate is a one-year certificate, and the program map at Tulsa Community College website lists the courses that you need to complete for each semester in order to obtain your certificate in GIS. Finally, we are happy to answer any of your questions. Please feel free to contact the Physical Science Department at TCC. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about physics, uh, give some more information about it. Uh, physics is a very rewarding major uh, with lots and lots of various topics that you can cover. So there's probably something that you would really like uh, when you go through physics. What physics does in a lot of ways, it's gonna help you apply uh, really uh, math to nature is what we're really gonna do. And you learn a lot of really important skills that you not only need for physics, but for other areas and other careers that you might choose. Uh, for instance, it teaches you um, unique problem solving skills you can learn how to solve a problem with just a little bit of information and you can use logic to get to a final solution. Uh, also, it teaches us how to do research. Research is very important, very important industry. And it gives us lab techniques that are very, uh, very valuable, not only in physics, but in other uh, majors as well. Uh, when, you're, when you take physics classes, there's really four core subjects. This can be broken down in different ways, of course. Uh, one thing, uh, the very first thing that you generally cover is what we call classical mechanics. Uh, that's going to be basic motion, laws of motion. We'll talk about force, uh, energy, momentum. This is uh, the backbone of engineering in a lot of ways. You can use this for physiology. Anything that has basic motion, uh, it'll be a very, very important uh, topic that we cover. Uh, after that, we a lot of times cover thermodynamics. That's going to be heat exchanges and energy transfers. That could be used talking about a motor, the human body. There's just a lot of practical applications. Uh, also, after that, we a lot of times get into electrodynamics. We talk about important things like electric field, magnetic field, how circuits work. That's a very uh, practical thing and very useful. We also learn about EM waves, light, and how to use optics. Our telecommunication system is based on optics in a lot of ways, and you learn a lot about that. And finally, we get into something very interesting. We uh, generally talk about things like quantum mechanics, the atom, electrons. We talk about the different and very exciting applications about that. So it's a very good major, uh, very exciting and very rewarding. And I'm gonna hand it over to Richard. Thanks, Paul. I'm Richard Walcott. I'm a physics faculty at uh, Southeast Campus. And um, I just wanna add a little bit to what my colleagues said, Professor uh, Shahibi and also Professor Glancy. Um, physics is very exciting. Um, it is not for nerds, all right? so. I'm not a nerd. Uh, all physicists are not nerds. Just want to put that out there. Um, and what I want to quickly talk about is the support that exists within the physical sciences department. Because just to echo what Dean Porterfield said a moment ago, um, you know, a lot of students when they embark in these very apparently complex majors, they wonder, well, who will be there to support me? How will I get through murky waters? Uh, so we will be here to hold your hand. We'll be here to help you. Um, all the faculty within the physical sciences department to the school of science, all the way through to the support uh, from the advisors to the counselors to administration. I mean, we are here for you. I just want you to take that away with you. Um, and most importantly, if you choose uh, physics as a major, um, and most of the majors within the physical sciences department, as you saw from the video a few moments ago, we make it our goal to connect theory with applications. So it's not just a bunch of crunching equations and, you know, all these complicated concepts that you have no idea how they relate. Because actually I'm teaching medical physics this semester and I'm um, making the applications between diagnostics 
uh, from x-rays using ionizing radiation all the way through to magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging and so forth. So we have a wide variety of applications, both in life sciences and also in the natural sciences. And just to echo what you saw in the video, we, um, you, physics is more or less seen as the bridge, so to speak, to mathematics. As you heard, mathematics can get you into physics and you just heard from chemistry. So all those courses are related, but some other uh, interesting careers you can go into if you choose to study physics, you can get into IT, data analysis, you can get into higher ed, uh, being a faculty member or even K-12 education. Um, you can become a stockbroker, you can do actuarial sciences, you can do research and development, you can get into so many other things. But as we, uh, and I just want to quickly show you a demo since we have no, um, we do not have our cool physics equipment to show you. And this is a bowl or actually a little container, right? You can say it's a plastic beaker of beads. And this principle uh, is based on Newton's first law or the law of inertia. The law of inertia tells us that an object at rest will remain at rest, or if the object is moving, it should continue moving with constant speed unless some ex unbalanced external force acts on it to stop it if it's moving or to push on it to start it to move if it's resting. So ultimately, um, I'm just gonna give it a tug. Lifting this up means it has more potential energy. Also the force of gravity will, will start to react on my beads and potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So let's give it a shot. Here we go. So 50 feet of beads just went. And also here is another demonstration on magnetic levitation. So as you know, magnets have two poles, north and south pole, like poles repel, opposite poles attract. And this thing also has mass. So gravity should be pulling it towards the center of the earth. But ultimately, if I go ahead and get it in the right position, those forces will be equal and opposite. So the right location will cause it to balance. And there you go. All right. So that is actually levitated and I can do some cool stuff with it. I can rotate it. I'll just bring it a little closer so you can see I'm not an illusionist. This is just physics. So thank you so much for your time. We look forward to working with you. We're looking forward to uh, giving you uh, a tour of our labs. If you so desire, you can make contact with us. Just contact your high school counselor. Thank you. Wow, thank you both so much. That was cool. Okay, so we have one more video for you guys and then we're gonna kind of wrap it up. Um, up next is biotech. So if you'll just join us for this quick video. Hi, I'm Jordan, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about TCC's biotechnology program, where we like to get our hands dirty with DNA, and we have a lot of fun doing it. So the TCC biotech courses are very hands-on, very lab-intensive courses, uh, where we do things like isolate DNA from one organism and put it into another. Uh, for instance, we could isolate the fluorescent gene from algae and then take that gene, put it in a bacterium, and now that bacteria will fluoresce, which is really, really awesome. Uh, we also do things like mammalian cell culture. Uh, we do protein isolations and all the while learning all of the processes and mechanisms that uh, allow for us to do these kinds of techniques. We have embedded research in a few of the classes where students as a group get to design their own research projects. Then they can go out into the field to collect data if they choose, then students make posters to present their research and then present these posters at Oklahoma Research Day or other conferences. Uh, we've even had some students that have been able to travel to national conferences and present their research, which is an awesome experience for students to be able to showcase what they've been researching and then communicate those ideas. So some of our graduates have gone directly into industry after getting their associate's degree, but many of our graduates go on to four-year universities to get their 
bachelor's degree and we have several transfer agreements that will help you seamlessly transfer to either Northeastern State University or Oklahoma State University. Um, but actually a lot of our graduates end up getting advanced degrees uh, like a master's or PhD um, because we first learned to love research uh, here at TCC. So um, please let us know if you have any questions or are interested in the program. Uh, my name is Jordan. I have my email below and I'm also going to give you the email of Dr. Dusty Sloan who is the bi biotechnology coordinator and uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that concludes our presentation today. Thank you guys all so, so much for joining us. Um, like I said, I'm Brittany from Career Services. We, I do want to let you know that we have a couple events coming up next week. Um, one is Paths to Nursing. So if you're interested in applying to nursing school, there is an event where you'll hear from RSU, NSU, UCO, TCC, and um, UCO. So if you'd like to hear from that, that'll be Zoom on Zoom from 11 to 1 on Monday. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so there's the flyer. RSU, UCO, OU, NSU, TCC. Join us, please. Um, the link is on the flyer. It's also in the daily. And if you are a pre-nursing student, you should have received it in your email. We also have um, Pathways to Medical School coming up. It's going to be Wednesday at 2 p.m. And there you can hear from OU and OSU. Um, on their process and just tips on applying to medical school. If you need anything, please let us know. I went ahead and put our, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in career services. There we go, okay. So here is our email address. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit those to us and we can get them to the correct department and help you get your questions answered. As you see on the screen, this is us, this is career services. Um, we offer a variety of services, whether it be career assessment, um, resumes, mock interviews, different events like this. Um, please, professional clothing closet, please let us know if we can help you. Here's our contact information. Um, and again, thank you all so, so much for joining us today. Have a great Monday.